Once the socket.io is set up and ready, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a variable called rooms and we're going to set this to an empty array. So this will be the variable which will get populated. This will be the array which will get populated with the list of rooms that the users create. Once I have this, then I'm going to also pass in the reference to this variable into our socket.js. So we'll just go ahead and say IO comma rooms. Now before going ahead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into development.json and we're going to create a new key called host and I'm going to set this to our development URL. So that will be localhost colon 3000. And we can create a similar key in our production.json, which uh, of course we will set later when we have the production URL from Heroku. Right, so let's get into the chatrooms.html page. We are going to use jQuery in this project. So uh, this would be a good time to, to create a script tag that calls in the jQuery library. So we'll do a code.jquery.com slash jquery hyphen 1.11.0 dot min dot js and we're going to create a script tag where we'll put all our code there. So the way this chat rooms view is going to work is the moment we load this view after the Facebook authorization happens is going to try and connect to the socket.io using WebSockets. And as the connection is established, is going to try and obtain a list of available room titles that we have in the system. So let's try and create that functionality first. So I'm going to create a variable called host and we're going to set this to the config.host, all right? Let's go into the routes.js once. What we're going to do here is we're going to also pass in a reference to the config object, which also means that I'm going to pass in the config reference here and also in the app.js. Let's pass in a reference to config over here. Right, so because the config variable holds the config.js, which means that based on the environment that we are running the app in, we will have the value of the host being made available to our view. And that is what we are fetching here in the chatrooms.html file. Next, we'll create a variable called socket. And we will set this to io.connect. So this is where we are trying to establish a socket.io connection. And we will create the URL by saying host plus slash room list. Now think of the room list as a namespace. Okay, so it's like giving a unique namespace, a unique title to all communications that we're going to do for the chat rooms view. Okay, this will not be a route. This will simply be a namespace that socket.io allows you to create specifically for segregating communications over a socket.io channel. Now, once we have the socket connected, the first thing that we can do is we can listen to the connect event. And we can do that by saying socket.on connect function and we'll just output to the console saying connection established right so let's just try this out and see how this goes so we'll say node app.js you can see that it says here socket.io started let's open the browser so we'll get to our login page. I'm just going to open the console and we'll click on login with Facebook. 
So this goes to Facebook, does the login and we land up on the chatcat page. So as you can see, we were expecting the message connection established to show up here. So the reason it does not show is because while we are trying to connect to socket.io at the back end, we still have to accept the connection in the socket.js. So the, the way we will do that is we will create a variable called chat rooms and I'm in the socket.js file now and we will set this to IO off and provide the namespace of which you are trying to establish the connection. So that will be room list. So remember we had created a, a, a namespace back in the chat rooms.html where we said io.connect host plus slash room list. So this would translate to something like localhost colon 3000 and slash room list. So this does look like a route, but it's actually not a route. It's just socket.io trying to create a unique namespace and segregating the communications over a channel. So io dot off room list and we're going to listen for an event called connection. And we will pass in a callback which has a reference to the socket which is established. So I as a user try to connect to the server and I am, I'll connect over a specific socket and similarly other users will connect to the app as well. So the socket in the callback function provides a reference to that connection. So let's just see what happens over here and we will also output connection established on the server. Okay, so this way we'll know whether the chat rooms view has been able to connect back to the node app or not. So let's just restart the app and see what happens. Okay, so it says connection established on the server. If you go back to the chat rooms page, you'll see that it says connection established here also. And we can just refresh once, you'll see that it logs out. We we'll log in back. And you can see here it says connection established, right? And if you go back to the terminal, we can see that every time that I see the page, the connection established on the server will come again and again. So every time the page is loaded, the connection is automatically established. Now, what this tells you is that you have an active WebSockets connection to the Node app at this point in time. And the chat room's view and the Node app can communicate over the WebSocket.